All right, so let's move on to number three now. So develop an estimated regression equation that could be used to predict the alumni giving rate using the data provided. Explain your model. So this is quite open-ended on purpose. So if we go back and look at the data, we have, we already did a simple linear regression of graduation rate versus alumni giving rate. We also have percentage of classes under 20 and student faculty ratio as numbers right now, which is what we can use. Uh, so one of the things that we might want to do is look at the correlation between um, we looked at the correlation between the graduation rate and the giving rate All right. so maybe we want to also look at the correlation between class size and giving rate and the correlation between student faculty ratio and giving rate and see what those look like. So this is correlation between uh, class size is an E, so E2 through E49, if I could type today, and alumni giving rate is in G. G2 through G49. So that's a, a positive correlation also. Uh, not as strong as the graduation rate, but still looks like it's promising that we might want to use that in the model. And then we want the correlation between student faculty ratio, which is an F, F2 through F49 compared to the alumni giving rate, G2 through G49. And that's a negative, and looks like it's strong, about as strong as the graduation rate. So the first thing you should start to think about is why is the correlation between student-faculty ratio and giving rate negative? Well, that's simple, right? The As the student-faculty ratio goes up, that means there are more students than to compared to faculty, then the alumni giving rate goes down. So the idea here is smaller classes or, or a, a smaller student to faculty ratio should help with the alumni giving rate because a student's alumni feel like they were valued or known or something like that. Uh, so they would, they would give more if the student faculty ratio was low compared to if it was high. Um, so we could go ahead and create a there's two, do, two different ways to do this. Um, one is to build the model up. So add one thing at a time and look at all the different pairwise comparisons um, that we could do, which might be instructive and you should probably try that. The other approach is to put all three into the, a model and see which one's statistically significant, which ones are not, take out the ones that are not and see what happens. All right. So let's try adding them all at the same time. So again, I'm going to go to data analysis, and regression is still there from the last time that I used it. And the Y range is going to stay the same. The X range, however, is now going to be, I'm going to do D through F. For the independent variables, Xs, they have to be in columns next to each other. So they need to be contiguous columns. In this case we have all three columns that are contiguous. So we're okay. Uh, and now I'm going to put it in a new worksheet ply. Click OK. And let's make this bigger so we can see it. And we see that the R squared went up to 0.6999. So about 70 percent of the variation and alumni giving rate can be explained by those three independent variables that we put in. We look at the significance F, that's the overall model significance for this multiple regression. Again, that's a very small number, so it's statistically significant. And then down here we look at the independent variables of graduation rate, percentage of classes, and student faculty ratio. And we're going to look at the p-values. We see that graduation rate is a small number, so that is statistically significant. We see that the percentage of classes is 0.83, so it is not statistically significant. And student-faculty ratio is 0 0.003, so it is statistically significant, even at the 0 0.01 level. 
the 1% level. Uh, the intercept notice is not statistically significant, but we almost always go ahead and leave the intercept in. I'm not going to get into details as to why that's the case. For everything we do in this class, you should leave the intercept in unless I tell you otherwise. Right. So this is, this is indicating to me that uh, percentage of classes is not helping explain all that much. So what I should probably do is go back and look at just graduation rate and just student faculty ratio and see what happens to in this case we would we'd start to compare the adjusted r squared values because the adjusted r squared compares uh, based off of the uh, number of variables in there and the sample size right. so um, let's try that so I first I'm gonna move this over and I'm going to say number three all. I put in all the three independent variables that we had numbers for. And I want to get rid of percentage of classes under 20, which happens to be in the middle here. So that's going to make my life a little bit more difficult. Uh, so let's do this. I'm going to copy and put it before sheet number two. And I'm going to... insert and I'm going to let's do I'll just copy the graduation rate and stick it over here so again I'm doing this because I need the two independent variables that I'm interested in graduation rate student faculty ratio right I need these two to be in columns next to each other all right, so now if I go to data analysis regression, uh, it's thinking G, but notice that I had inserted a column, so now I need to change this to H. All right, H1 through H49. The X range now is F and G. I have labels. I want it in a new worksheet. Apply. Click OK. And I'm going to go ahead and put it over here, make it bigger so we can see it. Uh, the R squared is 0.699, which was on the other one. The adjusted R squared is a little bit bigger, 0.686. So if we go back and look at this one, 0.679. So the adjusted R squared went up by taking out one uh, taking out the not statistically statistically insignificant um, independent variable right uh, which was the, the class size uh, we see overall the model still this model with only two independent variables statistically significant we see that both of these independent variables are very statistically significant and we see that the graduation rate uh, intercept or, or coefficient is 0.755. It's positive. Again, that doesn't surprise me. The more students that I have graduating, the more alumni I have, meaning the more possibilities of people giving money back. Student faculty ratio is negative. That should not surprise me either, right? Because we found a negative correlation between student faculty ratio and the alumni giving rate. So that should go down, right? As the student faculty ratio goes up, the giving rate goes down. So this is a better model because it, the adjusted R squared is higher than when we used all of them. And now we have statistical, both independent variables are statistically significant, meaning they should stay in the model. So right now it looks like the best thing we have going is um, using graduation rate and student faculty ratio uh, as the two independent variables to help me predict the alumni giving rate.